hardest part about improvisation in jazz guitar is navigating the keys that are changing. This is incredibly hard. We want to improvise freely, fluidly, expressively, feel good about how we sound, and the keys are changing through the progression, through the tune, while we're playing. So we need to switch the resource, the collection of notes that we're drawing from to make melodies uh, on the fly as we go, connect them together, not have it just be licks, not have it just be scales up and down, not jump to roots of the scale when the key changes, not jump around the fretboard. We need to have it so down, so thoroughly connected in our minds and our ears on the fretboard to be able to actually improvise original music. And there's a way to work on this that anybody can do. And that's exactly what we're gonna work on in this two-part lesson series. This is a serious jazz guitar scales workout uh, exercise series. We're gonna work on the tune called Solar by Miles Davis. And you can do this over any tune. I'm gonna give you all the steps. Um, and we're going to do four exercises in this video and then several in the, in the next video to uh, actually connect together and do this. Again, anyone can do this. It just takes doing the right things in the right order, having the right materials, doing it thoroughly, being patient, doing it from the ground up. And um, it's kind of cool. It's kind of almost like a science. Like if you do these things, you will get it down. And everybody needs to do this. And then once you do all that work and can see and feel and hear the scales and connect them together as the keys change, that's when our, much later, when our original voice can start to come out. You know, how, how we can have our own type of phrasing and have our own type of, you know, where we play chromatic notes or get weird or, but we need to be able to feel where the keys are changing. Um, and there's just no way around it. It just takes a certain kind of work. And like I said, certain steps in the right order. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this two-part lesson series. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, we're going to do four exercises. The first one is just analyzing to figure out what scales do we need over this chord progression. The second exercise is we're gonna find those scales in the same position on the guitar so we're, we're not jumping around. The third thing is that we're gonna drill those scales up and down. That might feel like what we usually do with scales, but I'm gonna give you um, certain milestones we have to pass to kind of pass the test before you can move on. That's very important here. We need to see them so well. Um, and then exercise four is we're going to play those scales up and down in the order that they change in the tune. That's when it starts to go towards what we're actually looking for for our improvisation. That's the outline of this lesson. I also have a bonus tip for you that's going to be really helpful uh, to help absorb this even more and a scales download uh, PDF if you need diagrams of literally any scale you could need for any tune. That's the lesson we're going to do. Let's dive into it. So this tune, Solar by Miles Davis, uh, first I just want to play you the melody so we all hear it and just say, ah, that's the tune. We actually want to know the melody, we want to learn that, listen to it, know the tune, and then we're just going to go into the, the chord progression and the scales, but let's just uh, hear what this song sounds like if you haven't heard it before. <laughs> So exercise number one, really this is step one. You don't have to think of it as an exercise. It's just we need to analyze the chords and figure out what the scales are that we need. This is not a lesson on that. I will go deeper on that soon. I'll do a whole lesson on how to figure out what scale works over any chord progression. For now, I'll give you some of the principles of it just based on this progression here, and I'll just give us the scales that we need. For C minor major seven, this is a minor triad with a major seven in it. Uh, the scale that I always use by default over this uh, type of chord is the melodic minor scale. So we will need C melodic minor for this chord because C melodic minor is a minor scale, one, two, flat three, four, five, natural six, natural seven, and then one again. This is uh, not classical melodic minor that when it descends, it's different. Uh, it's just melodic minor and that is the structure up and down. Check out my video on melodic minor and practicing it on the guitar. If you want to, there's a link in the description. C melodic minor is the 
scale that we need over that chord. Okay, now we have G minor, and if you see a minor seven chord, look around it, and really all chords always look around it and say, is there anything else in that same key? I'll talk about this more in my future video about finding scales, but if you see a minor seven chord right away, you wanna look for, is there a dominant seventh chord after it? And is that a fourth away? You can go G, A, B, C, one, two, three, four. It's a fourth above, which means this is the two and this is the five, this is a two five of the key. And is the next chord a fourth above and a major chord from the dominant seven chord? This is two, five, one. It's like most common chord progression in jazz harmony, two, five, one. So all of these are in the same key and they're in the scale of F major. So you can play C melodic minor for two measures and then F major for four measures. So all of that's from the scale of F major. And then look what we have here, minor seven to dominant seven to major seven. So the same thing happens again, two, five, one, this time in E flat major. So E flat major, the scale, we're going to play that for three measures. And then here we have it again, a minor seven chord, a dominant seven chord, and a major seven chord, two, five, one, this time in D flat major. So once you get used to looking for that and seeing that, you're gonna see it all over the place if you haven't um, gotten used to that yet. Really interesting about this tune, four measures, three measures, two measures, four, three, two, and then one. So I don't know if that was kind of by design from Miles Davis when he composed it, but it's very cool. Four measures of a scale, three measures of a scale, two measures of a scale, one measure of a scale. This last one uh, could be interpreted in a few ways, but it's very quickly happening. I would just play C harmonic minor for this uh, minor two five progression here. This is a two and a five in a minor key. It is leading back to this. So C harmonic minor for this one measure, and then back to C melodic minor, C uh, harmonic minor could work on this as well, but I like C melodic minor. And then we get more keys to change too. This is how I play over this progression with all four of those scales. So in review, C melodic minor, F major, E flat major, D flat major, and C harmonic minor. Those are the scales we need. Let's move on to the next step. Step number two, or exercise number two, is mapping out those scales that we just determined that we need and putting them as close as possible as you can, putting them as close together as you can, so you're not moving around the fretboard. Find anywhere you wanna play and try to keep those scales all in one position. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do that anywhere, you know, on any scale, and right? I'm just gonna give you the ones we need and show you how I'm thinking of it, and we'll give you the diagram of them on the screen and everything. So C melodic minor, I'm going to be thinking as close as I can to the fifth position. We'll often shift a little bit, but I'm thinking, you know, anywhere, wherever I can be closest to the fifth position. Here's the root of C. Here is my C melodic minor scale form in this position. Little bonus side tip here. I'm doing something I call the inchworm technique, where when I'm gonna shift positions, I play my first finger and then my fourth finger here. So I condense my hand position together and then reach out over here on this side. I'm sliding there anyway. But that just means I don't have to reach or shift suddenly and it just makes it smoother, less tension for me. I have a video on the inchworm technique. You can check it out with the link in the description. So here is C melodic minor. Okay. Next scale is F major. Here's the root of F. You don't have to know all the numbers of the scale, but know where the root is and know the shape and form of it and be able to play it up and down like this. Super slow is fine. Okay, next key is E flat. Here's the root of E flat and here's the scale. It's already very beneficial to hear the keys changing in this order because it sounds like the tune to me when I switch to that scale and it will to you too in whatever tune you're working on as you play the scales in the right order, even out of time like this. Okay, the next key is D flat. Here's the root of D flat. I have to go up to the sixth position, mostly. Here's the whole scale form. Okay, that's D flat. I'm doing the inchworm technique again on that one. And lastly, C harmonic minor, very similar to C melodic minor, but one of the notes is uh, a half step different. Here's the seven root. C harmonic minor. More physically 
awkward, very cool sounding. It's going to sound great on that last measure of the tune. So those are the scales that we need on the guitar in one position as close as possible together. Let's move on to the next exercise. Step number three is to drill these scales. You really, really need to be able to play them flawlessly just up and down in this case. Now this gets into often how we already are practicing scales. I'm gonna work on a scale shape, play it up and down. You wanna be able to do this with some very specific parameters. You want to set rules for yourself that you have to pass. That will get you um, reaching your limit of your ability, of your focus, and be challenged in just the right way. This is how we really, really, really actually improve. So we wanna set a milestone and we wanna set something challenging for ourselves, and that's how you will actually get this down. Rather than just, oh, I think I've played it up and down a few times, I'll move on to the next one. We need to uh, pass the test uh, to get there. So a couple parameters here. We need to be able to do this in time. So up and down from the lowest note to the highest note and back down in time any tempo, but in time, and let's just say eighth notes, but any tempo. So you're playing straight eighth notes, or it doesn't have to be straight, it can be swung, but you're playing strictly eighth notes up and down um, in time. Use a metronome, definitely. And you want to be able to do this 10 times in a row without a mistake on each scale. Okay, so I have right here in front of me on this desk that is in front of me here, 10 picks. Do this any way you want. I have a little counter thing on my phone, an app that I use sometimes, but this is a way that I like to do it. I have a video all about this um, way of practicing and I'll link to that in the description, but it is uh, absolutely the magic bullet for really um, practicing seriously and getting uncomfortable in just the right way to um, actually improve. So yeah, it's just a scale up and down, but can we play it 10 times in a row without making a, a mistake? If you play it four times, if you play it one time, you scoot a pick over and you then you can pause. You don't have to do it you don't have to connect them together. You should pause. Then you play it up and down again, and you scoot it over if you got it right, you play it up and down again. If you get it wrong, you scoot them back until you've done 10 in a row. So those are the parameters. And one more thing, this has to be memorized. Don't look at a scale form. You don't wanna to have to look at a diagram or anything. So lots of rules there. And this should be a little tip for all of your practicing. What are you trying to accomplish? What are the parameters? What are the rules? What are the guidelines you're setting up for yourself and then sticking to them? That's how we get control. And when things are hard, uh, instead of just bailing on them being hard, we say, no, 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 I gotta get it. I told myself I would do it in 10 times in a row. I, I can't look at it. I have to memorize it. I have to do it in time. All of these things. So I'm at 160 BPM just to not take forever demonstrating. Do it any tempo you want. Uh, this is the first scale, C melodic minor. I'm not going to demonstrate all of this, but just to do it a little bit. Okay, I got it up and down. I'm scooting a pick over. That's one time. Here goes my next time. Okay, that's two times. I'll do maybe one more. Okay, that's three times. If I make a mistake, even on the ninth time, especially on the ninth time, and I make a mistake, just be honest with yourself, scoot them all back over. Let this take days, let this take weeks, let this take months. You're actually getting it down when you practice this way. So I'm sure I'm certain this is different than how you've been practicing scales. Something about this, one of these things, right? How strict we are, maybe something like that. So even something that I think I know really well when I say, okay, I'm really practicing seriously to get this down for this goal, working on this song, whatever, this tune, uh, this thing I really want to be able to do, working on it from the ground up. How well do I know that core, core, core ingredient? How well do I actually know that scale that I'm trying to use? If I don't know it well enough to play this up and down 10 times, just up and down 10 times, any tempo, then why do I think I'm going to be um, really freely expressive with it in improvisation? You see what I mean? Um, we want to have those core ingredients so solidly down first. So you want to do that with every single scale, 10 times in a row. Remember, don't connect it together. Pause, scoot the pick over, check the box, whatever. Get yourself, do the count, and then do it again. And you're doing it with a metronome. And then you, and you just let it take as much time as it needs. If you did the first scale 10 times and you're like, that was really exhausting. I'll do the next one tomorrow. Don't go back and do that one again. You did it. Do the next one and let it build up over time. And then you'll move on to the next steps. So let's move on to exercise number four. Okay, exercise number four. Ready for this? This is where it starts to lead towards the actual song. It's really heavy duty practice. This should take you a while. And if you can't do this 
part of it, uh, then we shouldn't be moving on to trying to improvise and connect. You can still go play and try to improvise, but you know, for your real thorough practice of working towards this, you got don't skip any of these steps. And all we're doing now is we're playing through the scales again from lowest to highest. This time we're doing it in time and we are playing through the whole progression. Not in time with the progression, but just in time in a tempo. And you're gonna play up and down each scale, keep the tempo going, and you're gonna get through the whole thing and you count that as one. And you'd be able to do that 10 times. If you can't do that 10 times, because it's the most, this is the most basic version of connecting the scales together, of seeing them change quickly, of knowing next scale, next scale, next scale, which is this skill in our brain that we need when we're actually improvising. You'll see how we will make it musical in the next lesson, but this is really critical. So I'll go back to having this uh, metronome on. And here is the first round through C melodic minor. And then F major. And a couple beats of pause between is fine just to get a starting point again. E flat. But notice how I'm in time between them. D flat. C harmonic. And that counts as one. And I want to get 10 times of being able to do that. I'll do it one more time. just 10 times total. So you get a few of those, that counts as two in a row. If I mess up on the next one, I scoot the picks over. And again, days, weeks, months, whatever it takes for you, if that if you can't do that and we set a milestone and a goal and these rules, that's that just means we don't have it down yet enough to benefit fully from the next step and from the creative stuff and from all of that. Just to emphasize again, you can of course go, well, I'm gonna jam a little next, see how I'm, see, you know, try whatever. I'm going to jump into the tune and play it. I'm just saying in this series of, it's not like you can't play anything else while you're doing this, but if you want to fill in all these gaps, if you want to thoroughly methodically linear, uh, in this linear fashion and uh, get this down, actually have it down, um, then follow these steps and, or follow something very similar to this. So I'll say it again, you probably weren't practicing your scales through a tune that way yet. And it's so basic and it's so simple, but we're just being really strict with ourselves and we're going to continue to be strict with ourselves in those same in that same kind of way but with the really really fun stuff in the next video i'll give you my bonus tip in a second that really really helps with this process but first if you need scale diagrams for any scale that you're working on any position of any scale anywhere on the guitar all of the shapes all of the scale forms you can download my free PDF called the Printable Parent Scales PDF. There's a link for it in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. It has all of the parent scales, so not modes, but all the modes come from the parent scales, but it has certainly every single shape we did in this lesson and every shape you will need. If you're thinking of the scale shapes that move around the fretboard, any scale shape you'll need for doing this on any tune. So if you need those diagrams, those are there for you totally for free. Use the link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. Okay, here's your bonus tip that's going to make this process a lot easier. It might sound obvious, but in between your practice sessions, because as you can hopefully see this will take more than one practice session it takes me more than one practice session to do this on a new tune so i it should take you more than one practice session on any tune you really let this take time and in between those practice sessions you listen to this tune that you're working on even though we haven't got into playing the tune in time yet or the melody uh, you know we're just working on the scales of the progression listen to the tune a lot uh, during in between your practicing because the tonality of how it's changing is the same as how it's changing in even this last scale exercise that we did I said earlier in the lesson I can kind of hear the song in here when I change the key even though we're not in time with the progression or anything like that so that's very powerful you don't have to know what's going on in the song but just absorbing how the harmony is changing do it as part of your homework 
put it on while you're doing the dishes, whatever, and just listen to the tune. And extra bonus tip, listen to the same version of the tune, not just a playlist of everything. You know, don't just listen to a bunch of versions of it once. Listen to one version of it, Miles Davis, Chet Baker, whoever, tons of people played this song, and just really absorb that because then you're, you'll start to latch on to some things that are happening there and it will help a lot with your practicing in the next stages of this exercise series. That being said, please stay tuned for uh, part two of this series where we're going to uh, work in a similarly methodical way and actually plug it into playing over the tune, playing in time, being creative with it, making real melodies, having a blast with it, doing the stuff that we we're actually trying to do. That's going to be in part two. Hope to see you there. I do a lesson video every week, every Tuesday on this channel. See you next week. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.